just like to walk you through uh, the API for Tiger Beetle. Um, we're going to run six demos uh, to create some accounts, look up account balances, um, do some pure journal entries, uh, do some two-phase commit journal entries, and show how we can accept those or reject them. Um, so first up, we're going to start the Tiger Beetle server. I'm running Ubuntu uh, 20 within Parallels on my Mac, and I've upgraded the Linux kernel. In our Tiger Beetle repo, we've got instructions to do that. It's actually quite easy um, just to get to the latest Linux kernel. So you've got IO Uring. Um, we've also got instructions to install Zig. Um, that's also really simple. Um, so with those two out of the way, uh, let's start our server. Um, you would, you'll see in our repo, you've actually got this command to do this for you. Um, here in our demo, I've just ls that to tb. Uh, so let's start Tiger Beetle. Uh, we're going to compile quickly and launch. And I've set the server just to log at debug level so we can see everything that's going on. Um, so first up, the server has opened the journal um, that we'll be recording the journal entries into. And we use F allocate to pre-allocate um, a 256 meg journal. Um, we don't stop there. We also zero it, uh, just writing zeros all the way through so that we can make sure that the sectors are allocated. Uh, this can sometimes improve performance for systems like EBS. Um, now we're writing our end of file headers to the journal. Um, now the server starts up and reads from the journal. And um, these are our two headers. You can see our hash chaining is, is already in place. Um, so all our journal entries are hash chained. It's impossible to change anything in the journal without detecting that. And the server is now listening on localhost. Um, so the first demo, I'm just going to show you the source code. Um, this is Zig, and one of the reasons that Zig is great is it is basically C. It just removes a lot of the undefined behavior, um, and it has a few more safety checks, uh, quite a lot more. Um, but it also is really easy to read. So coming from JavaScript to TypeScript, this almost reads the same. And we're going to import Tiger Beetle and then just import our demo client code. Now we're going to connect... When we run this demo, we're going to connect to the Tiger Beetle server um, over the network. And uh, at the end of the demo, we're just going to close that file descriptor. So these are our actual account types. Um, there's two of them that we've put in, but we could create a whole batch of these, like 100,000 in one go. That's fine. Um, this account, it's got a 128-bit ID. Um, it can have some 64-bits uh, worth of flags. We also allow for some opaque user data, um, application level data that can, can go in. This is also 128 bits, so 16 bytes of user data. Um, the unit is just the unit of value for the account. Um, that could be anything, um, and this is a 64-bit number. So just for this demo, we thought, well, let's just use the ISO 4217 code number for South African RAND. Um, here we've actually got four balances and the reason is because we don't we don't decompose balances into a single number a signed number we rather have two numbers so we've got the debit side and credit side so double entry accounting um, but then we go a step beyond that and we keep track of our in-flight balances separately from accepted balances so if you want to know the settled or the accepted balance for an account um, that's the debit accepted and credit accepted. Um, the debit reserved is, this would be two-phase journal entries that haven't yet committed, but they've been reserved. Um, so these four numbers together, you can use them to get an idea for what's going on in the account. But again, we don't reduce that to a single number because then we would lose information. So we've got four limits here to control those independently. Um, if a limit is zero, it just means there's no limit. Um, but if you do set a limit, such as 100,000, then what we're saying here is this account, we only want to allow at most 100,000 units of value to be in flight so that people can't lock up liquidity. Um, similarly, we can control risks. So actual debit accepted should only be a million. Um, this account is the same, but on the credit side, we've given it an opening balance of 900,000 units. 
And we've also said that we want to limit the in-flight credit to 200,000 units. And we're happy with a pretty large accepted balance. Now we're going to use our, our demo client just to send these in over the network. This is the command, the protocol command for Tiger Beetle. So we're saying to Tiger Beetle, create accounts. He has the batch of accounts. And when the result comes back, this is the type of results we're expecting. Um, and the demo client is going to print that out to the console for us. So let's send this in. Uh, here's our server and here's our binary ready to run. I've pre-compiled all these demo binaries, um, but they can also be compiled. You'll see in our instructions with, um, you can run them like this. Um, and that's it, that, that will run the, the demo directly or you can build it into an exe like I've done. Um, like that. Uh, so let's let's build it again. Uh, or let's actually just run it. Okay, and it's run and that was pretty quick. Um, so we got back a 64 byte network header. Um, and everything succeeded, so we didn't get any errors. So that's all good. This was the server ACK. Let's take a look at the server, um, what actually happened. So we, this is where we left off. We were listening for connections. Here through IO Uring, we've received a connection, um, file descriptor 6. Then through IO Uring, we skipped a syscall and we just received from the kernel TCP receive buffer. We copied it into our statically allocated TCP buffer in user space. Um, and we received 320 bytes from the client. And first up was the network header, 320 bytes. We've got checksums in there. Um, then the leader took this batch of accounts. We assigned um, monotonically increasing timestamps. Um, then we appended it to our journal. And we appended a copy of the journal header um, at a different location on disk so we can detect misdirected writes and and also we can disentangle uh, system crashes versus corruption in the middle of the journal. Um, so this technique allows us to do that. Other, otherwise, we wouldn't be able to differentiate between um, uh, a corruption in the journal because of a crash versus corruption just somewhere in the middle. And a lot of systems, what they do is they just have checksums like, like this, where there's only one copy of the journal header. And if there's corruption, they just assume it's a crash. But actually, if there's corruption and it's just corrupted in the middle of the journal, then they would truncate the journal and lose a lot of data. And that systems like Zookeeper and LogCabin, and they're still vulnerable to that. Um, there's only a few custom deployments of those that actually have some of the fixes for this. Um, here we go. We're actually going to create these accounts now. Now that we've, run, we've journaled them safely to disk, we're going to run them through the state machine. So we create accounts one of two. And here's the account that we already saw in the demo source. Um, it's, uh, it's going to um, look like this. And here's account two. And you can see that both of them were okay. And we then write a header back to the client. And we send it through our Uring. And we check if the client wants to send us anything more. They don't. So we close the TCP connection. And that's everything that happened. Now let's run it again. And let's actually just use the system timer to see how, how quick this is. So 7 milliseconds. Let's try it again. Um, it's pretty quick. And we're getting to the server. And the server's now telling us there was a problem creating these accounts because they exist. So let's move on. Uh, we're going to now just look up account balances. And that's pretty simple with our client. We're just going to send in um, and say look up accounts, pass in a few IDs. So let's look up accounts with ID 1 and 2 and let's print them out their accounts. Um, so let's run this now and now we get our ACK back from the network and now we get two nice accounts coming back and here they are exactly as we've defined them. The only thing now is you see they've been assigned a, um, a permanent timestamp by the server um, so those are immutable. Let's move on and see how we create an account. So let's just do journal entries now. 
uh, not thinking about two-phase um, commit transfers. Just These are just journal entries. So we call these auto commits. So you can send these transfers in, and as soon as they go in, provided they don't break any invariance, then they'll commit automatically, um, just as a, as a normal typical journal entry. So we're going to now debit account 1, credit account 2. We're going to give this journal entry the ID of 1000. Here are three custom slots we could put in for opaque data. So we could put things like our LPV4 conditions in here or, or pre-images. We, we wouldn't do that for an auto commit transfer. Um, but that, that's what these three slots are for. You could put something like a um, user data description in there, um, some ID that will help your application out. Um, we've got th these transfer structures are 128 bytes, so we align to two 64-byte cache lines, um, and we've got the space for these three custom slots. So they're there, um, and this is just part of creating a good experience for the application. Um, so the flags on this auto committing transfer, we're going to say um, we want to accept it and auto commit true, a thousand units, and auto commit transfers don't have timeouts because they auto commit. So let, we're going to set a target little here. We want to create these transfers. Here's the batch. And this is just a batch of size one. What we realized with Tiger Beetle is that everything is always a batch. So um, we, sometimes systems think that you know you're batching or you're not batching, but everything is a batch. The question really is, you know, how big is your batch? Is it a batch of size one or a batch of size um, ten or thousand? So we've just designed the whole interface to do batches first class, um, and the user can choose what they want to do. Uh, so let's send these auto committing transfers in, and that's it. They they went in and they were fine. Let's see the server. Um, the server now got these batches and um, appended to the log and you can see create transfers one of one and that was okay. Um, and let's take a look now at the account balances to see how they have now changed. Um, so now the debit accepted amount has changed. It's gone from zero to a thousand. And the credit accepted amount has gone from 900,000 to 901,000. You can see our reserved balances weren't affected because this wasn't an in-flight uh, transfer. This was just, you know, auto commit. It, it, made it, it took effect straight away. Um, let's see how, uh, how two-phase transfers look. Um, this is the source now in our demo. So if you like, you can actually take this code and, and change this you can put in three transfers here seven and change change the the numbers everything that's all fine um, some of these could be auto commits too so you can mix normal commits with auto committing transfers but here the, these are both two two-phase transfers so this one with id 1001 we're going to debit account one credit account two hundred thousand units this one we are now going to do the same thing but only one unit and let's see what happens when we send this in. Um, so we get the 64-byte ACK. Um, the first create transfer succeeds. The second one, which is uh, we're using zero-based indexing at, at index one, that gets an error. And we're told here that we exceeded the debit reserved limit. And let's look up those account balances to see why. Um, so because of our first two-phase transfer, we reserved 100,000 units on the debit side. But at the same time, our debit reserved limit is 100,000. So after that first two-phase transfer, we can't do any more. And that's why our second one failed, even though we were only trying to do one unit. It was just one unit too much and over the limit. Um, you can see the first one reserved 100,000 on the debit side and did the same on the credit side for account two. But it's not yet reflected in the actual accepted debit or credit balances. Um, let's now do that. Let's go and accept these transfers. And to do that, the actual, this is now a commit. Um, we're going to send commits in where we just pass in the ID of the transfer we want to commit. So this is the transfer 1001. We want to actually commit that. 
And again, three custom slots, which we're not using. Uh, and we say accept true. And we're going to try and commit 1002. Um, the reason for, for actually having this whole two-phase interface is that what we found, we were going to just do pure auto committing transfers, just pure general entries. But why you actually want to have auto committing, uh, you, you want to actually have two phase uh, transfers is because a lot of systems, when they get the fulfill, the fulfill only has an ID. So if you wanted to do the compensating journal entry to recognize the fulfill, before you could actually do that, we found is you'd actually have to do a query to the database to say, hey, did you get a transfer in? And then, and that causes then a whole lot of logic to be spilled, um, and and it also just halves throughput. So this is a that's why we actually have this API to just commit transfers given only an ID. Um, then Tiger Beetle can do the lookup internally without the extra network request. Um, but systems can choose; they don't have to use two-phase. Um, committing transfers. If, if they are only trying to ingest data, they could just do pure auto committing transfers. Um, but this, this is faster doing a, if, if you have to do a two-phase committing transfer, it's faster to do, do it this way than to do um, just pure journal entries where you have to also doing a lookup to, to query the database. Now with this, you don't have to. You just send in create transfers, commit transfers. It's two requests instead of three. Um, let's run this. So we've called this demo accept transfers. What this means is we're going to commit the transfers, but when you commit, you actually say you're committing this to accept or you're committing it to reject one way or the other. So we're going to commit these and accept. And again, 64 byte ACK, we got an error on the second commit because the transfer was not found. Um, and remember that was because that transfer didn't succeed because it exceeded the debit reserved limit. Let's see what happens if concurrently maybe some other part of the of the system decides to reject transfers while without realizing that, that they had actually been accepted already. This is what a reject looks like. It's exactly the same, but you just toggle the flag to reject to true. Um, and let's run this. And we're going to see that uh, we only tried to reject one transfer, but that was the one we had already committed and accepted. And what we're doing here is instead of just saying um, already committed, we, we're starting to surface more information over the wire so that the client, if it runs into this, can already act on this um, information without having to do another lookup to the database. So the client can see my intention was to reject and hey, actually someone already committed and in addition to that, they accepted where you were trying to reject. Uh, so we try to surface more info from the state machine in our error codes so that we can try and avoid another round trip if possible. Um, now, the key thing is, now that we've accepted the transfer, how did the balances change? So remember, when we created them, we only impacted the reserved balances. Now we do another lookup. The reserved balances have gone back down to zero. Um, and the accepted balances have jumped up nicely. So we've gone from 1,000 to 101,000 on the debit side and the exact same on the credit side. Uh, and we're still within our accepted limits. So everything is good.